Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Muggle Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO at the start, or really in the middle of a campaign, playing as Ust Sislok, but right now, as you can tell from the thumbnail and the title of the video, we're getting a certain Shaverovich. The assembly had expected two outcomes to this meeting. The expected outcome was that Gumileyov would enter as head of state and emerge as head of state. After all, was he not the driving force of the right? The underdog story was Igor Shevherovich, the compassionate conservative, as he styled himself. Shevherovich had been the young face of the passionary, and had been expected to have a long career in front of him. Of course, events changed all that, and suddenly Shevherovich found himself not as second in command to one faction among many, but second in the leaders of Komi. This was not a position he particularly wanted, and his split from Gumileyov's wing drew much attention. Most analysts agreed, however. Shevherovich had made his move too early. His bid for power would come up short and then he'd surely be in for it. When the vote count was finished, Shevherovich was named the new head of state. The National Assembly fluttered with confusion and mild surprise. It was nowhere near the shock of what would have happened from a Serov or Taborevsky victory, but it was enough to surprise many. As the men and women of the Assembly filed out, Shevherovich took a moment to savor his victory soon. He could really get to work. An unexpected outcome also... Please let me know in the comments below. If I'm saying his name wrong, please correct me. I don't want to say his name wrong too often, so... But... Oh well for now. Ah, love, goodbye, love. Hello, Igor. Look at look at that jawline. Look at that smirk. Ooh, intelligentsia. If you like to read about him, please go ahead. We lose political power, but we get more research speed. Um other than that, if you like to read about this one, please go ahead. I've just, just been kinda of doing stuff like basically building us off building us up to get to this point where we got this guy here. Um look like Sverdlovsk is doing quite well. This is the same save I used when I played as Serov, Ivan Serov as well, so it is what it is. Um, if you want to be a, read about control of factories, please go ahead. Because right now, I just want to push us ahead. Push, 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 push us ahead. Just so that we can get to the next stage. We have... Actually, I lost... <laughs> once again, I lost the uh, IFV division because I was forcing the attack. It is what it is. We have no manpower, as you can tell. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Um, I'm trying to train some of these guys here, too. We're using... Oh, we have research. Uh, obviously, we're using the mod, you know. Last years of Europe. We're also using Play of Peace Conferences, which basically does nothing. We're using uh, Stations for Tool Mod, just in case. But we also have the TNO West Russian War uh, enabled as well. So we'll see what happens. Whoa. Now that's a lot of manpower. Um, scavenge for Luke. Ooh, we, eh, we might as well try it. We might as well try it, right? Because if we can beat up Onega, that would be really nice. We did already have a successful raid here. It is what it is. Uh, but I will read some of the focuses that talk about Shafarovich once we get through some of this stuff too. So if you'd like to read about the second purification, please go right ahead in which we're supposed to lose stuff, but it is what it is. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to come back up here and we're going to read about Depend on Moderates. Most of our popular support is centered on the moderate wing of our alliance, led by Igor Shafarovich. His promise is to respect the Republic while reaffirming our national traditions as well sanitize our party to voters beyond the hardcore of our constituencies. Adopting this graduate approach and national democratic ideal will maintain support and stability while we implement our ideas. A compassionate re reformism. As the people must serve the state, so must the state serve the people. Our commitment to uphold strict moral values gives us a strong foundation from which to build a such a state. Now it's time. Oh, if you want to read about better agricultural methods, please go ahead. Now it's time to build on that foundation. We must ensure our people are warm and safe. We must feed the, our people uh, feed, feed their bellies and their thirst for purpose. We must not think of the work as easy or of ourselves as infallible, but work gradually and learn from our mistakes. Our values will be our foundation. Each successive reform will be a brick, and soon we will have built a grand structure to house all of the Republic. Um, if you want to read about which one? Uh, prefer this one. Read about Break the Tartars, please go ahead. Cool. If you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Cool. Anyone want to read about this one too? And that one. There you go. Cool. And then we also have an experimental dream. Our duty to restore our country to greatness will never be done, and dogmatic adherence to past decisions will only hinder us in our work. While there is <clears throat> okay, there's a time and place for spectacular action, it is through the many small successes of our day-to-day -day struggle that we will realize our dreams for tomorrow. We'll be pragmatic in how we rule the Republic, and we'll be practical in our day-to-day -day rule, and we'll apply the lessons learned from past failures, both our own and those of others. As long as we remain true to our ethos of compassion and conservatism, and informed by the ancient traditions of our nation, we can afford to experiment with policy, which we got less political power technically, and cap. And if you wonder about this one, please go ahead. <clears throat> and if you wonder about casting down Tata nationalism, please go ahead as well. We're all Russians, like it or not. Skawa Samara. There you go. I'm not reading these because I've read these all before, so it is what it is. And it looks like Serov Shafarovich. Actually, 32%. How do we get? Hmm. I'll get this up too. Yeah. Uh, we could probably raid him. we we'll probably do okay. Uh, let's stop training then. We do have 12 divisions, which is pretty darn nice. Let's see what they do. State and the nation. We can hunt down more opposition, but not really. Uh, let's see where we at. So we were at Reformist 146 and Serov uh, over Ordo Socialist was 115. So it is what it is. Um, Anything else here? Not really. Eastern defensives are done. Scour Samada. 
We're going to get four. I'm trying to make some tank divisions as well. They're 20 combat with each, so that'll be good. Let's go in. Let's see what happens. Say no, say no. We'll see what happens. I refuse to be. Let's go in. All right. We're not winning so far, which kind of sucks. And we're actually looking like we're missing some stuff. But we're beating the crap out of them, which is so nice. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, see is all we can use. Very good. And then, um, uh, stability, declare war. Let's do this one. Cool. And I follow our Turkic brethren. Nice. All right, and we'll get some research facilities. Food for hungry? Maybe worry about that. Please go right ahead. More political power, stability, war support is very, very nice, of course. And still building some of this stuff up as well. Actually, can we reunify the place? Actually, we should be able to. Uh, let's do this one too. Form the West Russian Free Republic. Get a research slot and a new focus tree once we kill off Onega. Us Sislas unifies West Russia. From a Komi Republic, our Russian nation is born. West Russian Free Republic, great. Uh, request finished negotiations. We have 12 divisions. That's not too bad. We got that third research slot already, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's get some better trucks. Let's go with this. Let's spend. Just do that immediately and spend some more because we're going straight to war to beat the crap out of them if we possibly can. We have all this up too, which is unfortunate that I already spent all the, all the PP on construction stuff, but whatever. Uh, anything here for poverty? I think there was. That's industrial equipment. I, I, I really want to focus on poverty. I'm big proponent on focusing on poverty here, so. Oh, that's not bad. I like the industry stuff. That's also very good. I love those. It's the second one for poverty. Academic base, research, equi expertise, equipment as well. No, and no. Okay, that's weird. I thought it was something else here. Um, that's not looking. That's actually got a lot worse. Um, hmm. Construction speed's not bad. I do want to do industry because we need to really emphasize the industry, so that's fine. It's fine, whatever. Cool. And we're going to close that out and, and just invade, I guess. Yeah, we should do okay. With 12 divisions, we should do okay. They're 20 combo with, so. Yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. With, like, there's seven twos, which are pretty decent. Not, you know, perfect, but it's pretty decent. We'll make 40 combo out of them eventually, but once we get enough army XP, I'll throw, we'll probably throw on recon too. All right, and restoration day. There you go. Slightly decreased scoring time. Um, actually, this might just be bypassed later on because we won't be able to. Uh, we won't be able to do all this stuff just because our focus. This focus tree will change soon. There we go. Um, so there's this stuff here. Actually, we. Uh, maybe we're not gonna war with them. But it is what it is. We won't get this other stuff here, which actually really sucks for us. I should not clicked on that, but whatever. It's all right. And revitalize Russian people. So, yeah, my bad. Maybe I should not have clicked on that stuff. Whoopsie. Oh well. Ah, uh, see, Restoration Day. Now we can't do that, because we have to probably be at peace for that. Let's do Lexi Labs. If you want to read this one, please go ahead. I'm just doing this to get more political power and world support. Literally the only reason why. We lost there. That's fine. Once we win here, we're going to push it here, too. There you go. There you go. That's nice. 14 divisions now. Not 12, but 14. Very, very good. Oh, we're losing an Onega, huh? Not ideal. We just force the attack. Just force it. Kill them off. Seriously, just kill them off. There you go. As long as we take Onega, we'll be fine. There we go. We got them. They're done. Go all the way. I always like going all the way with Finland. Go all the way. Do not stop. Beat the crap out of them. Enjoy their bodies. Okay, man, let's not get too crazy here. Oh, and see, as soon as we beat them up, the thing changes. So my apologies. I should have waited. But I normally don't wait, so that's kind of my problem. The moral economy against small nations. Let's do compassionate conservatism. For the past five decades of Russian history, the nation has undergone sweeping changes. First came the empire, which vacillated between an autocracy and a constitutional monarchy. Then the republic came into being, which failed to compromise between the ideals of the founders. Finally, in our lifetime, the union and how has failed. The nation lay shattered, and the unity between the Russian people was subsumed under the subordination by the elite. Now that he has come to power in the republic of us Sislok, President Shafarovich has ideas as to revive, or how to revive and rejuvenate Russia. Key to his plans is his ideology, that of compassion Passionate conservatism. No longer shall the peoples of Russia be driven against one another by difference in ideals and class. All shall be one, as God had intended. No longer shall the people rage against their ideals, their pillars of culture, but belong in harmony with the state and the nation. Under the president, a new Russian dawn shall rise, and the few failures of the past shall be erased in a light. Compassionate conservatism? Isn't like George W. Bush or something? I don't know. That's what I thought I heard before, but eh, I could be wrong. Uh, integrate them. Uh, national democracy. I like that. Caffeine flow. We run with that. Please go ahead. A toast for future success. Um, ooh, we get, ooh, we get more political power. I like controlled opposition. Ooh, it's not bad. Ooh, more political power, less stability, reduces strain, a wealth through solidarity. I like the PP though. Ooh, against small nations and elitism, that's not bad. Turn to God's values. Ooh, I like that a lot. So, ooh, you get 10% more spiritual sovereignty. Oh man, this might be a route. I, huh, that's not bad. Yeah, hmm. 
I think I'm going to go down here first. So this is the way we get... Because down here, you can get two things to reduce administrative strain. You get more political power too, which is nice. But I want to get these two, and then do this one, and then get down here. So you get even more political power. So against small nations. For centuries, the peoples that belong to the Brotherhood of Nations in Russia have been oppressed by a minority. These small nations, as Shefevish prefers to name them, have held differing values against the majority. Values that do not fit into the frame of the Russian nation. Through the long ages, they have schemed to implant their thoughts and ideas to Russia, but through vivacious endurance and verve of our intelligentsia, we have resisted these subversions to our national ideal. It is time to put all doubts of the worth the rest. We shall proclaim our ages long of struggle against these nations. Let Russia be vindictive. Let rage course in her veins, their ideas, their attempts at planting the seeds of dissent and resistance among the people. We shall toss out to the winds, for too long have they become our elites, our rulers. It is time for Russia to reassert her own will. Go, boys, go. You're doing a great job. Beat the crap out of those fins. Go. Seriously, just go. Seriously, just go right now. You find them, beat the crap out of them. Please, 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 please. Um, nothing much here. Ah, Larry and did nothing wrong. Find him, beat him. Actually, do we have any planes? I forgot to check this time. Uh, oh, we sort of do. I'm glad I looked. I'm really glad I looked, actually. Fighters, nice. Cass. Good. Get over here, boys. Nice. Oh, oh, boy, can we do... Oh, that's the yes. Just, just, just send them to pound town. Just pound them. Pound them harder. I don't know why I said pound, but we... Whatever. Getting some tanks would be very nice as well. The anti-communist officers. Um, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Actually, when I took out Samara, I actually commissioned them as well. So, release them. I like more political power right now, but actually, what? let's commission them. I'm going to commission a lot of people for this campaign. A brief interview. Welcome, Igor Rostislavovich. Thank you for coming to our show. My pleasure, Sergei. Now, if I may jump straight to the point that everyone seems concerned about, some politicians have called you a uh, <clears throat> fascist, citing some of your rhetoric. What do you think? Well, Sergei, I must admit that I may on occasion be overzealous in my pursuit of restoring Russia's glories. I like to think that my rhetoric is, in fact, simply the product of me caring too much about the well-being of our nation. Oh, but what about the allegations that claim you employ activities, criminal activities, of course, in destabilizing opposition? I assure every listener that this is not true. I am a man of the law, a compassionate conservative. My campaign tactics revolved around appealing to the human spirit, to the past, and to the present. The future requires a lot from us, and I simply do not believe the liberal parties to be capable of being able to guarantee prosperity. Those who do not believe me, look at Germany. They are fascists, no? Well, yes, they are, but I do, but I do not advocate for racial purity, nor do I foam with the mouth over revanchism. No, you don't. Then all is well. Actually, you know what? We get more political power. I want to get. I want to reduce the strain some more. I want to reduce it a little bit more first. So, national democracy. We are building here in the Republic a democracy that will stand the test of time. A democracy tied not to the voices of the people, but uh, to the very vitality of the nation itself. To do so, we must introduce new institutions to encourage political participation among the masses, especially for the ruralists whose votes we rely on. It is their energy that shall drive the state onwards, and it is their belief that will keep us grounded as we move into the future. Nish national voting rallies, a push to civic culture, and enthusiastic political rallies will be a start, but be assured, this is the work of a generation. Oh, and we're still doing that stuff, which is great. Um, agriculture, which I do want to do, equipment, which we'll, I'm going to try to do as many as we possibly can here, don't get me wrong. I love construction stuff. I like this one a lot, because even though it uses more civvies, we do get a military factory and equipment, which is very nice. I love this one, too. I love all, I love, I love a lot of these ones, so let's get more of this one first, so equipment. That'd be good. And, because right now, we're looking pretty good. Look at that. Academic base is going up pretty quickly. I'll do research facilities, uh, mass mechanization, poverty rate is getting even better. Look at that. That's awesome. Uh, rudimentary equipment, and we have nascent industrial base. So everything needs improvement, but sports rivalry. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Boom. Nice. 8 billion, not bad. Keep going, guys. We have 15 divisions. Actually, if you want to cut them off right there, that would be tasty, tasty, tasty. Oh, no, you don't. Force them to die. They will not cut us off. They will die. They will die. And let's do some... State resources? Eh, that's okay. Let's do research facilities, because we can. There you go. Kill them off. Nice. Alright. Nope. 24,000. Not bad. They have up to 13 divisions. We actually have more divisions than them currently, which is very good. I guess I should win there. That'd be really nice if we could. Um, go here. Go here. Nice. Keep them in place against small nations. National democracy, because we can. 
Determination, Mosley or Moisey Rosenberg. Through your participation in a small nation seeking to undermine the stability of the Russian state, you are henceforth relieved of your duties. The gray haired Ministry of Public Works manager stared at the policeman in front of his desk office in disbelief. Small nations, what? Sir, I've been serving the government of Komi since its formation. And before that, I was part of the Soviet civil service for years. I've worked so hard for the government. You can't. I'm not here to negotiate, Rosenberg, according to the list published by the new government. You are a textbook example of a member of one of the small nations who seek to subvert their motherland. I don't just... I don't make the list or define what a small nation is. I just enforce the rules, the officer replied. I just... This is because I'm Jewish, aren't I? Rosenberg shouted. You pigs know better than the fascists who destroy this nation. Rosenberg, pack up your items or I'll arrest you for insubordination. Do you understand? Rosenberg glared at the officer before gingerly gathering up the pens and papers on his desk. The officer watched and then pulled out a list of other small nationals that were to be removed from his administration from his pocket. Lev Edelstein... Isaac Cantor, Nathan Cohen. The most effective codes are those hidden in plain sight and the tension zone. It's no secret that Russia is a nation of nations, though the majority component of it is indeed the Slavs. Hundreds of people live within its borders, who share little in common with one another. Tensions are regrettably inevitable. From the highest levels of privilege to the poverty-invested slums, from the echelons of the government to the homes of the average Russian, bigotry festers. Russia is not an, an ordered house. Its current troubles exacerbate this chaos. As such, the president shall promulgate a return to the national state of things, untainted by the toxic past. The government shall ban racism and xenophobia, then Russia shall become a house of civility and unity, where the phobia against the Russian ideals shall not be tolerated. The government shall try the transgressors of this law and sentence them for hate speech. The state ensures no bigotry, no persecution, aggravated by the small nations or otherwise. Russia is one, and Shevardnadze shall ensure its survival. What do they mean by small nations? Hmm. Small nations, you say? I have a very good idea what they mean by small nations, but I'll leave that for you guys to decipher. We'll put it like that. Actually, go up, take them up. That area. Yeah, that area. Good, 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 good. 18,000 losses versus 34. They are getting more manpower now, which is kind of unfortunate. Or, yeah, more soldiers, but oh well. All soldiers will beat the crap out of theirs if we must. And we will. Good, break them. Actually, they got more decryption than us, huh? Get some extra emphasis over here. Alright, uh, nope. We go all the way here. Go big or go home now. And tensions. That is very good. Followed up with Alden Army. For too long, Russia has been in discord with herself, the various peoples that dwell within her conflict with one another, and with seemingly no end in sight. The small nations have fought us for centuries, desiring to drive away the concept of harmony and usher in an era of malignant individualism. The Empire, Republic, and Union, the great manifestations of the Russian spirit and soul, all failed in combating this threat, falling into the traps of factionalism and partisanship. However, with the tensions between the ethnic groups of Russia pacify, there can be no doubt as to what course of action is the next for the fledgling state. The President and his party shall enshrine this new order, this state of newfound harmony. If all the peoples of Russia cooperate, there will be no need for insurrections and rebellions. Any that happens would be the work of troublemakers, puppets of the small nations. 29,000 versus 43,000? I don't care how many it takes. I really don't care how many it takes. Oh, there you go. 7,000 manpower? That's 7,000 too much. Actually, how many guns do they got? They got a few guns left. That's fine, whatever. 5,000 manpower. Drop them, drop them, drop them, guys. I know it's very costly for us, too, but still. Help out here, help out here. And let's do some education. Nice. Ah, that sucks, guys. You can't do any better than that. Peace challenged. Russian or Uslan Karimov, you stand on trial for Russophobia and the propagation of anti-Russian ideals. How do you plead, Judge Maximov called out. Not guilty, came the reply from uh, Karimov. Maximov stared at him briefly. We can take a lot of losses here. Not guilty, yes. Karim Karimov, the previous month you were caught distributing anti-Russian pamphlets on the street of Ufa. Police records indicate these pamphlets were incredibly hostile to the Russian religion and way of life. Uh, Your Honor, I only wish to spread the word of Allah and his prophet on the streets. Nothing in those pamphlets were in any way hostile. His religion is a religion of love. The prosecutor took out a pamphlet on the evidence desk and handed it to the Judge Maximov. In these pamphlets, it reads that the Holy Quran is a true holy book Allah gave to mankind by his prophets, and to that... To follow the commandments and tenets laid down in it is the only way to paradise. The animosity between these pamphlets displays towards the words of Christ, which are so fundamental in Russian culture, is shameless, as is your denial of its propagation. Cut him off for the distribution of Russophobic materials. The court hereby sentences you to 15 months in jail. The consequences of provoking, provoking the majority are terrible. But they must be so. 
Seriously, guys. Force the attack. Kill them. I don't care if you guys die. I really don't. You kill them off. I want you to find them and beat the crap out of them. I don't care how many men it takes. I mean, I don't care if we have higher casualties than they do. Because they're going to die. Either they die or you die. There's no in between. I literally don't care. I literally... You're both going in here. I don't care how long this takes. I don't care how many men die. I do not care. I do not care at all. Finland needs to die. They need to die. And die today. Hmm. Yeah, I'll give it another day. There you go. Cool. Adaptable's good. Anything up here? Nope. Alright. And then... And elitism, more stability would be nice. I want to get this political power though. And elitism. The Empire had its nobility. The Royal Public had its bourgeoisie. The Union had its Politburo. All share one thing in common, an unabated desire for power by concentrating it to a select elite fully capable of exercising authority. The fate of Russia was not decided by the people, but in the back rooms of political institutions. Unseen by anybody but the bureaucrats and the operatives of these uh, regimes, of these regimes. Genuine Russian democracy has not been tried before, for it was frustrated and made impossible. This obsession with elitism was then. There is a need to review the figures of the past, and the president and his party would be willing to do so. The ideologies that form the core of support for these elites, be it socialism, fascism, unenlightened democracy, will be passed down before the government and judged. The government shall be the vigilant, guarding, uh, vigilant guard of the people. It shall select and guide the common man towards a brighter and more egalitarian future. Come on, kill them off. Eat, kill them, or lose. That's those are your only things you can do here. Kill them or lose. Because we're gonna get more manpower later on. Later on, anyways, I don't really care. So, you know what? I, I am sick of these divisions being stupid, being so incredibly stupid. Kill them. Seriously, just kill them. We're losing a lot of guys, but I don't care. I really don't care. How did you both lose here? These guys are just incredibly stupid. You go in and you kill them. Does it, it doesn't take a brain genius to figure that out. Go in and kill them. They have to be out of manpower now, though. They literally have to be. How can you not win here? Wow. Okay, so we're going to lose these divisions. I might just actually replay this off screen. I might literally just do that right now. Uh, we'll see. Give it a moment here. Because they have to be out of manpower. The fins just... They, don't, they have no more strength. They literally have no more strength. So... I'll go this way. Go here. They will die. Ooh, they kill these guys off. I'm going to murder every single last one of them. Yep, they're going to die. Oh, nope. Nope. No, they're not. No, they're not. Kill them off. Kill them off. We saved one division at least. Come on. Kill them off. You, they don't have any more strength. I might literally just fix this up off screen, but let's read another one. Turn to God's values, as if it was Russia had forgotten its progenitor. The traditional values that had governed the order of Russian society lay abandoned, its followers scattered, the mention of morality is regarded as embarrassing, and the youth, having no guidance, turns to decadence and avant-garde art for what passes as moral purpose these days. The seat of public conduct is low, where everywhere in Russia. Though it is understandable, for after all, a united Russia has not come into being for the last 20 years, this can no longer stand. Russia is a Christian nation. It professes no faith to a single church, and the party regards it as a mere tool that the nation used to reach maturity, yet the values they propagate that became the benevolent custodian of the Russian soul resonate with the new state thoroughly. For its moral values, the Russian state elects Christian ethics. Russia was, is, and will be a nation built on the foundation of the values of Christ, estranged with the church, though it is. Basic motorized? I don't know this campaign. For this one, it seems like, uh, oh, she, well, yeah, we're actually doing okay there. The Finns really were ready for us when we struck. It was quite unfortunate. What do they have here? Like, Intel, how do they have an Intel advantage? Why not? National Spirits. They don't have anything there. They have a lot of war support, but that's it. That's all they got. And we came in with a lot of equipment. Like, this is ridiculously bad. And these guys refuse to move. So, I'm not sure what these guys are doing, but... Go in and kill them off. Seriously, kill them all off. Every last fin. Yeah, no, I think the fins are actually cheating in this one. Yeah, the fins gotta be. Because if they have no manpower, how are you? How are they expected to do anything? 1v1, you should easily be able to win. 2v1, you should win without question. Wonderful. I'm actually going to replay this, though. Uh, no, hell no. Go kill yourself, Finland. I will kill you so hard next time. 
Next time I do this, I'm going to kill him off much harder. But let's read about against the technocratic thinking in Russia. The existing school thought that ran contrary to Shevardovich's ideas of harmony coexistence. To him, technocracy is an enemy to the Russian people and the concept of democracy. How could it not be? Technocracy seeks to tear people out of the fabric of society and desires to throw all tradition in pursuit of false progress. Free will, therefore, becomes unfree, subject to the whims and algorithms of inhuman, cold machines. The state shall reject this idea. Technocratic ideas of progress through technological advancements mo removes the cultural context of the Russian people. Without the order provided by the Russo-Christian values, what would Russians be but a barbaric people who are ruled by and rules through chaos? Death to the ideals of false progress. Death to those who wish to subject the people to the net machine will. Russia shall remain free forever more. And here we are, my friends. Now, I've already gone ahead and uh, finished off the war. I was actually quite a bit more efficient this time and actually paying attention to how our divisions were conducted, but whatever. I've already finished up spiritual sovereignty. The state's decrees are clear. The state of chaos and discord that has dominated Russia in the years before Shevardovich had disappeared completely. What remains is a harmony wrought by the hard work of both the party and the peoples of Russia. The elitist thought that had so long been prevalent in our politics has been replaced by the values of a Christian state. Small nations with their narrow world views have been cast out, their ideals defeated and erased. Now Russia is sovereign, not only in the political sense, spiritually. Shevardovich has established a new order, complete independence from ideologies that only seek to destroy and subsume human Russian culture and values. All that remains for Shevardovich's status to proceed is to cement this legacy. The party shall tighten the laws, and the troublemakers shall be no more. Soon all who oppose Russia shall be gone from her soil, and we're currently doing restore constitutional rule. For all its faults, the Russian Republic, or the Republic, was a bastion of democratic liberties. Its constitution allowed the formation of so many political schools of thought, a crucial component in any democratic state. State. During Shevardovich's rise to power, the constitution and the various bodies that depended on its existence became suspended, left in the ways of it as a passionary strive to maintain stability. As such, the people ask, what shall become of the guarantee of their rights? The president could not but help grant the people their wishes. He could and shall restore the constitution, but now without applying his touch first. Such alteration is necessary to prevent the power struggle that ensued before the ascension as his commander-in-chief of the nation. As modification shall ensure the opposition and the equal and the government be able to debate their issues on equal footing, with dissent and violence disregarded as a relic of a less civilized age. Awesome. And right the wrongs? Ooh, uh, hmm, yeah, why not? Although the Constitution is a crucial part of the Republic's democracy, it is not without flaws, while political thoughts and ideologies flourish under its rule. Violence also proliferated in the streets of Ustislavsk. It is only, it's also only catered to a select elite of the upper class, or classes, serving their interests before that of the common folk. Thus, while blood ran through the ditches and sewers of the city, the politicians infested the legislature, determined to use the lives of the people as yet another ploy to gain political capital. A rearrangement is necessary. Shevardovich shall contain the excesses and the wrongs of the system. The president and his party ought to have the power needed to ensure that his interests of the government align with those of the people. Only by a harsh but fair hand shall the republic finally move forward, realizing towards real progress. Not one halted by partisanship and conflict of ideologies, but towards a better tomorrow. Towards a better, brighter, stabler Russia. Also, I'll let you know it's already October. Uh, I went back and actually basically re kind of restarted the save a little bit, uh, or the beginning of the video, and went back and actually finished... The other four focuses focuses that we weren't able to finish before before we went to War of Onega. So I did those four first and actually definitely helped out our uh, base here. So and actually to get better primary schooling. So yeah. I went back and actually finished them off and I actually gave us more army XP. I actually have more army XP too now. I mean it was easier this time taking them out because I with those extra we got extra army XP before we went to war, so I made these guys 40 combat with. As you can see, uh yeah, 40 combat with. So it was definitely easier, but Whatever. I'm leaving you. That was the only thing she said as Olga pulled her open her dresser, pulling out a handful of clothes and shoving them into her bag. What? said Ivan, taking a shock of horror in his face. Was that something I said? It is about is it about Yes it is. She didn't look him in the eyes, she closed her bag. Please tell me whatever it is I said, I'm sorry. She closed her eyes and remembered the first time she saw him. He was a little kid, chubbier than the rest. He was so sweet, kind, and considerate, it was hard to imagine that the kid grew up to become this. No, Ivan, you're not. You're never sorry for the things you say. She wondered where it all went wrong. Was it when she saw him reading a column by that fascist Shafarovich? Or was it when he got into a fight with some Comey workers after calling one a savage? Or was it when he screamed at her for daring to question his thoughts on smaller nations? Please, Olga, please don't. She wandered down the hallway and stood in front of the door. She could hear him behind her. Please, I swear, please, I'm sorry. Olga closed her eyes and tried to push out the memory of this man and to remember the chubby boy who gave her flowers. Please. She opened the door and stepped outside, not looking back. Please, Olga, please. She heard Ivan shout, please don't leave him. I'm sorry. Whatever I did, I'm sorry, please. She closed her eyes and tried to stop herself from crying. I love you. She turned a corner. Ivan fell to his knees and wondered where it all went wrong. Hatred is a thing that poisons everything, even love. 
if it exists, to the Russian National Party. The passionary president, Shevardovich, conceded, was a hotbed of new, untested, and unappealing ideas, yet its most prominent flaw was the division in its ranks. There were Eurasianists, the autosocialists, the monarchists, and finally president's very own compassionate conservatives after the Congress and convergence, however. All these factions fused into one, here to... Here to here, yeah. Hitherto, hitherto, unnamed entity. All the passionary with its partisanship and ideological differences now belong under Shafarevich's thumb. This is not a time for division. Russia needs a strong, unified, united political force to, hel to helm its resurgence. The factions of the passionary shall face two choices, to follow Shafarevich's scheme for unity, or be cast out to meet the fates of the liberal, socialists, and communists. All will agree that shall constitute this political force, the Russian National Party. With the aid of the Democrats, who should learn Shafarevich's side, control should not be hard to establish. Also, I am continually boosting up spending here, just because even though it's not great for us, uh, we are really out of equipment trying to make these guys awful to come with. I mean, we lost a lot of like equipment and artillery and stuff like that, but of course, after you beat them, you get a lot more stuff back, but still. It wasn't super, 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 super bueno, but it is what it is. And actually, because of the extra time, I've been able to get all the other stuff down here too, so. Pretty nice. Pretty nice when you actually spend extra time trying to get more political power and improving society and getting more stuff, so. Nationwide participation? Ah, uh, yes, the Union and the Empire and the Republic had one thing in common. The lack of participation in politics among the common folk. There were elections to varying degrees of effect, but by and large, the people did not participate in the political decision-making of the nation. In the absence of such participation, the peoples of Russia had grown restless, restless, with the governments only fulfilling the barest minimum of their mandate. The situation cannot stand any longer, and the president aims to correct the course of the Russian nation. Shafarevich's new political organization, the Russian National Party, shall be not a mere political party instead. It should become the voice and organ of expression for the vibrant and burgeoning ideological thoughts of the populace. Every aspect of life shall be political, and the party shall exercise its benevolent prerogative to intervene in the interests of its citizens. Hey, we'll get back here too? Nice. Um, academic base, agriculture. Um, looks like there's everything here we can do. Nice. And we're not going to do that one because we don't have enough stability. Even though getting more worse, but it would be pretty nice. And i do it anyways because we can. Nice. Mm, a wealth of solidarity. I want to do this one, but I'm going to do the other one. If you want this, please go ahead, but a well through ballot. Oh, a little bit of lag, and happy almost 1967. The president concedes that the parliamentary institutions and processes are necessary towards the realization of a state that is in touch with the people's will. An opposition in his mind is a crucial manifestation of checks and balances within a democratic government, and the people disagree with the state. Discontent broods under the surface. This dissent must be given a voice, a presence within the legislature. However, it needs guidance and nurturing to ensure that it would serve the interests of both the state and the people. The president and the party shall allow the opposition to contest the elections, meanwhile. The state shall do all it can in its power to guide them to an outcome that furthers the interests of the voters. Surely, with a little word and education, the people would vote in good faith to the most desirable set of politicians to ease this transition to a new form of democracy. The president shall also compile the various opposing forces into a single party. The state does not need pointless debates, but rather useful advice. Because I just want more PP. Yes, yes. Well, this is very good. Yeah, we get a lot of political power now. Wow. We get 1.22 every day, which is not bad, but ethical order. Be it through solidarity, solidarity with the labor, or through the will of the ballot, the transformation of the Russian political landscape is finished. The president has established his desired vision for the hierarchy of the nation, that of the ethical order. Now, now nary a citizen in the republic identifies with the value other than the president's own. Under the grace of Russian patriotism, compromise tradition, a new Russia awakens, one that will finally redeem its past and collapse. These values guide the political opposition and its re and its. Re Reverbs sound throughout the Republic. Through the medium of civil debate, there can be no violent dissent. In this new political order, a citizen is guaranteed his rights, he has obligations, he has his privileges. The model citizen only needs to follow in the footsteps of the president and the party, all his concerns he needs to only voice, and the government shall deliberate. The government represents the people. Dissent is impossible. Cool. Keep, keep, keep building and spending. That's all we do here. We have 18 divisions, which is not enough. Like... I'm going to shoot for at least 80 divisions. So we're still getting our tanks here. They're still coming along. Uh, we've only... Mm, do four, because we actually needed a little bit more. Anything else here? Revitalize the national service? Yes, for more, better consumer goods. 2020 some? Nice. Because right here, as we always do, we're just going to build, 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 build. Yeah. This time around, like... I don't know. The, oh, war with Finland. I'm doing it off screen. I don't know. I just didn't care when doing it on screen. I'm just doing it off screen, just... I don't know. Making a sequence is so much easier when you're actually paying attention. But the Russian civilization upheld. The Soviet Union is many things to many people. To Shavarovich and the Russian National Party, the period of its rule meant a time where Russian values were under the threat of erasure, to be replaced by the proletariat culture, an invention born out of a communist deceit. All the political change that he had advanced, he did with a single goal in mind, the restoration of Russia to the place where its import is the greatest, the hearts of the people. The accomplishment 
of this goal is at hand. With the political and moral spheres aligned to Shevarevich's vision, the last step may finally be undertaken. Uh, these spheres from a discrete entity shall be conjoined as one. Morality shall be politics, and politics shall be morality. No more is a need for violent dissent. No more is a demand for uprisings, rebellions. If all are in harmony, Russia shall be safe and her civilization upheld. You can practice democracy. If you want to read this, please go ahead. A new theater. Uh, just unlocks decisions to exert influence on seven year olds, which we're running behind, but whatever. Increase investment. Lots of investment. Cool. Anything down here? Nope. Hi, hi. We're both high. Ethical order. Nice. I mean, we could always launch military intervention, but now nah, we're okay. Um, what else do we have here? We have up to six. Oh, national assertiveness. I like that. The patriotic Russian army. That's not bad either. Uh, this stuff is all okay. Get military factories. Uh, this stuff is okay. The organic command structure. There's really not much here. I'll be honest. There's not a lot here that I thought. I thought we had more than this. Yeah, that seems kind of. I don't know, a little small and empty, but maybe I'm wrong. The moral economy. Once it was assumed the free market alone could govern the appetites of Russia, perhaps in a vacuum this would have been valuable. But the greed of the basis of men within our society and the malevolence of those that exploited the system. For Russia's wealth, the peasantry and the rural family were impoverished as urbanites gutted themselves on excesses so shameful they were almost fet fetishistic. A fetishistic, yeah. No more. To safeguard our economy from past successes and groom for the future, we will institute labor rights and in limited wage controls over key necessities, and strict, strict background checks for those who might have reason to exploit the innocent. Cool. Current influence is not bad. Their influence is actually quite a bit higher, which is quite unfortunate. I mean, if they even get a line down there, I mean, it's not over for us. And we still got 18 divisions here. And these guys are 40 combat width, so I'm not really too worried about it. And they're fully trained for now. Batov is looking pretty good. That's a lot of manpower, but we have more, obviously. And obviously, he has more divisions, but we're working on it. I mean, this is looking really bad. Actually, it's not too bad, actually. We just need more tanks, equipment, artillery. It is what it is, of course. I don't think discrediting it will do too much, so we're probably not going to. Investment is currently high. Nothing else down there, so. Practicing democracy. Dmitry couldn't keep his enthusiasm contained for the last year, or past year. He had kept tracks of all new records, reports, followed by the paper and radio, what, read whatever political books he could get his hands on, and now it was time. Cast your ballot, cried the advertisements. Everyone in Dmitry's class was participating in democracy, the foundation of the republic itself. The line was only eight dozen long, but Dmitry felt as if he had been waiting for centuries. He shot excited glances at the older men as they left the stations until it was his turn. The process was rather simple. Dmitry cast a vote for de Democrats and was off. His heart raced as he imagined telling his friends about the voting day. But he left the building, crossed the corner, bumped into a strange man in a trench coat causing both to fall. The man had been carrying a crate out of which a few flew tiny slips of paper. Voting ballots? Dimitri recognized him immediately. Watch where you're going there, kid, yelled the man as he reloaded the box. The boy went back home, but he couldn't shake the thought. All the ballots hit Shafarovich. Absolutely. Uh, ooh, better consumer goods factories. The village idol. Too long had the traditional ways of Russian agriculture and life been ignored. Life for Russians was never so great when then than when they breathe the open air, away from the pollution and noise of the cities and factories in the past. A man could work on the land he owned and reap the rewards of his own hard day's labor. Today, one can hardly enter any political discussion without discussion on how to industrialize and how to increase production in the factories. We must reject such thinking. The city shall be reoriented towards a long disregarded rural life and encourage a return to a more agric agricultural lifestyle. Ah, oh, yes. Anything else discredit? Uh, we could always launch intervention, but I don't really feel like it. Oh, do we get anything else down here? Reunification of Russia? I guess we extra influence is fine. But... I mean, we're kind of already basically doing it, so. Um, whatever. Cool. 40, they're receptive. Oh. Oh, no! Our, oh, that's not good. Huh. Oh, so anything gear? No. It's kind of hard to read all these at the same time, but whatever. Um, so we're trying to get all the way down here. Military factories need to go up more. Even if they get them, that still could be worse for us. Hmm. They're both neutral towards us, so. Hmm. Oh, it's not looking great for us. Where are we at? 2022? That's not bad. Ah, that's unfortunate. At least we're receptive here. Why are we so slow? Oh, yeah. Why don't we decrease investment? Decrease investment? No. Decrease investment? Discredit opponent in Ornberg. going up by 0.6 still, I guess, yeah, yeah, I mean, they got to it first, this thing is okay, it's not great, but they got to it first, I'm like, eh, eh, 
Whatever. I mean, they'll come kill us if we're rural economics. Except from announcement A390. Go Gospodin Shevarevich would like to wish luck to all settlers moving into the countryside. The company is pleased to report that, in the last month alone, has received uh, a lot of rubles from the Shevarevich administration. Additional factors have opened in XXX and uh, Quadruple X, with our workforce increasing by 15%. Gospodin Shevervich has also promised additional funding in excess of 50% of the original amount for all companies willing to employ disenfranchised farmers. The so-called Rural Initiative is part of a plan to modernize agricultural sectors and diversify the economy. I strongly advise all executives to heed this proposal, specifically by expanding into the Quintuplet X. Yeah, Quintuplet. Quintuplet. Uh, further plans call for a moral economy. The peasants will take priority in job applications. All companies whose workforce is at least 60% rolled by XXXX quadruple X is to be granted excess of 80% of original grants. Accepted and signed. Ooh, this is going to get worse, huh? Oh, that's not good. A new Russian peasant. Oh, how's it going? Amending, amending for tragedy. If anyone could be considered the greatest victim of the Bolshevik Revolution and subsequent Soviet rule, it would be the peasantry. The poorest in our nation were not uplifted, but rather crushed by an incompetent, overbearing state. Millions lost their home and properties as the state seized all, and millions that died due to poor agricultural policies that the Soviet Union pushed on the people. We must pay reparations for the horrors they suffered through and reorganize the peasant cooperatives acting to act more independently under the state. Oh, nice. Look at this. We got this one back. Good. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get these guys, probably. They're aligned. That sucks. Hmm. That sucks. That just means we more, need more divisions. We need more output, too. More military factors, I guess, technically. It'll be alright. Because when we're there attacking us, we should be very okay on defense. I don't want to do this one because I don't want it worse than our stuff, but it's actually not that bad. You know what? I'm going to wait for that, though. Creative management. Despite our focus on a simpler, more agrarian rush, the economy remains a complicated and difficult entity to handle. A new government bureaucracy will be created to handle our nation's economic affairs. The responsibilities this agency will have will include management of industrial permits, public work projects, and the handling of foreign businesses in our country. Additionally, this new bureaucratic organization or org will be taking the responsibilities of zoning, zoning laws, and regulations off the hands of local governments. If you like to read about decrease in poverty, please go right ahead. Boom. Thank you. Very much. That is looking not too bad. Yep, yeah, didn't help out that much, but that's okay with us. Oh, can we do any more here? Oh, look at that, yes. Free infrastructure, basically. Yeah, it costs us some civvies and money, but whatever. Resources, we could. We're gonna need tanks, though. T64s, thank you very much. Cool. I'm ending for the tragedy. Creative management. Make sure we got five. Anything else on here? No. Actually, we can continue to discredit them, I guess. I suppose we could. Technical guidance? Ooh, that is not bad. GDP growth and decreased interest. Ooh! The collective well-being, unions, government, and big business are the three pillars that uphold the economy. Through the mutual cooperations and negotiations between these factions, we have created a legal framework that benefits all, however. This synergy could be even more efficient than it already is. The unions and corporations often act very antagonistically towards one another, with the government occasionally acting as the mediator between the two. If the government were more involved in these negotiations between the two, it's likely that these negotiations would result in far fairer and more equitable agreements. Tripartism is in the public's best interest. Yeah, there's not much else we can do here, though. One, two, three. I'll invest in the black market, too, so. Um, just gonna put in Orenberg. Oh, we could try, but Bones' influence is not very high. Military invention. Oh, basic trucks. Nice. Yes, less interest rates, more GDP growth. Extremely good stuff. Alright, go do that one, too. Trucks are always okay here. And how are we doing? Are we building up enough? One, two, three-ish still. Not really building too much more. Um, increase the relations? Yes, please. Receptive? That's good. Oh, wait, oh, I thought it was higher than that before. Huh. Alright. Well, we probably still won't get him, so. Yeah, construction is fine. Technical guidance. Even despite a preference for for the ag for an agricultural way of life, it is impossible to maintain a modern society without a core technological core of technological intellectuals capable of implementing and utilizing modern technology as we rebuild a great nation. We will need the experience or expertise of these esteemed men and women if we are to eventually repave the roads and rebuild the schools and return to some level of normality again. With hope, soon our lands will be even more prosperous than ever before, maybe even more so than our neighbors in Germany and or Japan. Keep spending, keep spending. It's, time, it's okay with me to keep spending because we need more output. This Spending more on the military budget will give us more output for tanks, 
artillery, stuff like that. The Burnside problem was the old teacher had not much time of late for mathematics. Evgeny Golod returned to the living room with a new kettle of tea. Igor Shevarovich <clears throat> had sat hunched over the table, observing neatly arrayed piles of paper. Outside, the bustle of daily activity was winding down at this hour between lunch and, of course, late afternoon. The pair had spent most of the day exploring the Burnside problem and others like it in the group theory. What a fini finitely gr generated group in which elements have finite order would be a finite group. Intuition seemed to say yes. How could finite elements of limited scope generate what, what is boundless? Yet, naive institution was dangerous towards any mathematician now that algebraist, algebraists had an angle of attack towards building a counterexample for a given field. An infinite dimensional quotient group could be built under certain conditions from there. Solving Burnside's problem was much simplified. All one had to do was create a quotient group generated by finitely made elements of finite order. This would warrant at least some interest in Russia's dwindling mathematical community. Perhaps in the outer world someday? The verifications were moving ahead rapidly. Golod leaned back into his chair, the warmness of the tea mixing with the satisfaction of work well done. In this instance, it was so easy to imagine a path not traveled, a Russia not ravaged by war, not divided by scheming generals and politicians. A nation where his friend and mentor had a career with a distinguished academic instead of his current occupation within the pack of jackals of the passionate organization. These past few years, Golod had lost himself in his mathematics to try to blot out uh, the entire world, or outside world. Perhaps his friend would live to come out on top of Comey's politics. Perhaps he'd been murdered or exiled. In the meantime, could Golod blame himself for seeking some friendship, some memories of a better past, or an impossible future with his old colleague? Pure ideas far from unclean reality. Yeah, I definitely gonna be able to get this group, probably. That sucks. Oh, well... Um, nice. Uh, ooh, yeah, good. Good. I'm gonna save the next one for, uh, military factors to get a bonus, so. A renewed city looks really good, though. Compassion before materialism. Oh, high taxes? Ooh, we lose 20% more political power, and even- Oh my gosh, we lose a lot, hold on. We lose a whole lot there. We get more income, but lose a ton of political power. Struggle for social justice. Okay, that's not too bad. That's going to kill our GDP, though, but a renewed city. Rebuilding the urban areas of Russia will be necessary if we are to ensure the future of our nation, however distasteful urban life may seem to us. After the destruction of the Second World War, followed by over a decade of uh, destruction or destructive warlordism, many cities are not only in ruins, but demographically just ruined. Not only have millions died, but many fled to the countryside as city infrastructures providing food and other necessities collapse. We must bring city infrastructure back up, back up to an acceptable level. Communist revolt in the Gulf. I've never seen this one before. The revolution advances in the most unexpected places, it seems. Nice. This is actually worth it. This is really worth it. The Tang Lang Shevevich Group. Oh. They're both aligned. Yeah, just, it, I don't know, just not worth doing that, I guess. Evgeny had sent him a pile of translated algebra papers. The Americans did not stop working on algebraic number theory despite everything else going on in the world. Shevarevich was excited to read about their findings, of course. A bit melancholy, perhaps, but that war ravaged Russia had not kept up. All disappointments were soon forgotten as he read the papers, sipping tea every now and then. A few developments caught the politicians' eyes. It seems that the American Serge Long and John Tate had centered some of their work around what was become known as the Tate Lang Group. This group consisted of the elements of the Vile Chatelet group of a number field K that are trivial than all complica completions of K. This notion had equally emerged from Shevarevich's work in the 50s with collaborators. Intriguingly, the Americans had not been able to determine if such a group was finite. This had been one of the open questions in the Russian algebra community as well. Shevarevich had no idea the question was entertained in Germany. Early translations of Japanese papers did not seem to indicate much interest in the question from the Far East. John Tate, Shevarevich spoke to himself, his methods were good, his papers were written elegantly, precisely. In another world, where America and Russia had not been separated by catastrophe, perhaps both men would have collaborated. Shevarevich shook his head again, smiling. He wasted so much time dreaming of useless dreams. Time for the present to write a few letters. And actually, right now, I'm going to do this. Separate you two into two, just to prepare for the inevitable. Well, the inevitable. Actually, I want someone who has the most defense right now. Ah, there you are. Thank you. Come again. All right, because we're going to have to defend like this. Two, three, four, four, and go all the way around because they will be attacking us eventually, and he's probably going to just integrate these guys. So we got to be ready for this. I mean, 40 combat generally is pretty good, especially if we have air superiority, but still. So just in case, and we have, we're hiding behind a river for a large portion of this too, so it's not too bad. Awesome, 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 awesome. Uh, Renew City is very good to do. Um, I don't mind doing this one first, just because we get more political power and stability. Even though it hurts our expertise and equipment, it's really not that bad, so. Renew City. 
preserve our way of life, in order to achieve our vision of the Russia that once was, we must limit the amount of technological and industrial innovation that we allow within our borders. We can't have new technological or industrial developments disturbing our peaceful way of life to that end. We will be implementing a series of restrictions on heavy industries like steel and chemical production. Additionally, factory owners or investors wishing to build new factories or research labs will now be forced to adhere to strict zoning laws and a new permit system. And right now, what are we lacking? We're lacking a lot of artillery, which is god-awful. Um... We're lacking what else? Tanks. Is it just artillery that, really, that we're just lacking now? Anti-tank and main battle tanks and artillery. There you go. Because now I'm going to go cut this down a little bit lower. Uh, go down to three, go down to one. We unfortunately have to do that for now. So we got a lot of PP though. Receptive. Yeah, they're dropping our relationships. That sucks. Alright though, happens. Uh, guard nature, of course. Oh, actually, we lose factory output. Let's not do that one yet. A new Russian peasant. Let's do that one better. The Russian peasant is seen by most citizens as a dirty, uneducated, and isolated farmer who lives in poverty. If we are to shift into becoming a more agrarian nation, we must combat these false perceptions of the Russian peasant. We should nurture a, few, a new image for the farming life that accentuates, or accentuates the prosperity and independence of the agrarian life. Rather than poor, the peasant is self-sufficient. Rather than dirty, the peasant is hardworking. Rather than isolated, the peasant is land-owning, sharing the collective ownership of a commune. With hope, we will be able to change the image of the average peasant and even encourage others to take up the farmer's lifestyle. That'd be kind of cool, actually. There you go. Increased relations, yeah. Decrease. Launch military intervention. We're still high, but yeah, they're just beating us up there. That's actually really good. God nature. Guard nature, Coming and Russia at large, has been blessed with some of Mother Earth's most beautiful and bountiful lands. The old growth forests that stretch from St. Petersburg all the way to Vladivostok, the vast plains of the Eurasian steppe, the clear waters of the five seas, the vast mountain ranges of the Urals. These are natural wonders whose beauty and splendor are as overwhelming as they are invaluable. We cannot allow man's greed and lack of forethought to be so, to what the whoa, 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 to to soil the na natural artist artistry that each of these wonders represents. Laws will be drafted, limiting and restricting what man can do to these most precious national treasures. My apologies about that. That was really stupid about how this happened, so. Oh, Heil? Well, if you say so. Alright, looking a little bit. anti tank just looks so bad, though. Keep boosting up, up. Boost, 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 boost. Why does this keep going up some more? I don't understand. We're making more civvies, so. National pollution to good pollution regulations to return to soil. A main focal point of our campaign to return to our roots is the re-adoption re of traditional values that we have long since lost. Such values like morality, discipline, work ethics, and family. Additionally, we should strive to change the people's attitude on what a modern economy can and should be. While a nation can become economically successful through industrialization, such mass industrialization isn't necessary to provide an acceptable quality of life. All that Russia needs can be found in the fields and farms. Anything else here? Um, not really, no. We only have 20 divisions, not enough. Just because we don't have enough here. Anti-tank, why do we have only one anti-tank going on at the same time? Like, this is ridiculous. Come on, artillery, hurry up. So we can get some more down here, too. Guard nature, return to monk. No, return to soil. Alright, trying to modernize it, that's good for them. And then no one left behind. That is okay with us for now. I'm not doing that one yet. It is a sad fact when an opportunity to exploit his fellow man arises. A man will choose said action nine times out of ten. In order to combat the exploitation of the masses, public unions will be created and supervised by the government. These unions will function democratically, with union leaders being chosen every four years by ballot. The government will reserve the power to remove a head of the union should he prove to be corrupted or working against the public interest. Membership will be compulsory, allowing workers all the benefits and obligations that it incurs. Oh, we actually lower this. So now they're receptive too. And we're high. Do we like being high? I guess. Decrease investment, decrease investment. Okay, that's not bad. That's that's actually okay. We have a, we've got a lot of PP now. Holy crap. We're a ton to soil. Can we get some more improvements here? Uh, what's next for this group? Uh, research facilities coming along very nicely. Uh, 49, 106, 33, 158, 177. Eh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Definitely getting there. Better trucks, very nice. Actually, for this. One, two, hey, we're on three. That's actually really nice. One, two, three is pretty good. But I'm gonna go ahead and trade one away so we get some rubber. Because we could probably really use some rubber for our planes, so. Return to soil. No one left behind. 
So this way we get that factory up a little bit higher as well, once again. Struggle for social justice, but after better tanks, of course. Actually, no, we're not going to make better tanks yet. I don't like making better APCs, but not better tanks just yet. No, no, no. 11.7 billion. It's getting worse because we're probably expanding more here. Anything down here? Come on, please, 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 please. Nice. Yes. 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 Struggle for social justice. Here goes GDP. Though we look to the past for moral and lifestyle guidance, we saw the capability to reap the benefits of living in the 20th century. A public welfare system isn't out of the reach for a modern state, and new organizational and computational technologies have significantly eased the creation, administration, and maintenance of such systems. Additionally, such a welfare system would grant us the capability to act on our own moral obligation to take us care or take care of our fellow man in such a way that wouldn't be have been feasible in centuries past. So up to our poverty, our GDP. Uh, generous unemployment subsidies is insanely costly, as well as acceptable pensions, but it does all help poverty, which is super, super important for us here. Um, this one is... I want the war sport. Let's grab it. We're not going to discredit the opponent yet. Uh, actually, can we do this again? That'd be really nice. There you go. Now they're receptive again. Alright. And then, prosperity through harmony. That's not bad. Toiling for the community. Um, uh, I don't want to do this one. I really, 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 really don't want to do this one yet. I like the PP that we're getting. I really do. I don't think this is really worth it yet. More max factories in a state can wait. These, this stuff can wait. It can literally just wait. So, a national assertiveness. After decades of embarrassment and failures and humiliation on the world stage after two wars in which millions of our brothers and sisters perished, over a mil after a decades of warlordism and civil war, Russia has risen from the ashes of the former Soviet Union anew and empowered. We are still weak and have much to improve on before we can be considered a superpower like Germany or Japan. But at least for now, the foundations are laid. We are a sovereign, independent power, and we are here to stay. Absolutely. Can we increase the relations yet? Uh, we're close. Poverty? Yes, 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 yes. And we're not improving those tanks yet just because I want to give us more time first. We need more time uh, to build regular tanks. Diplomacy without prejudice. Ah, uh, let's do the Russian Patriotic Army. Our men have triumphed. West Russia is now under the control of the proper Russian government, one interested in the welfare of the Russian people and the defense of our nation from any threat. Our growing territorial ambitions must be reflected by the new name of our armed forces. The Patriotic Russian Army, as it shall be known now, will march to the depths of Siberia to defend Russians from those who would oppress them. When the time comes, our attention will shift west to the decadent Germans who continue to tyrannize our people. But if you enjoyed the video today, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the... the description below and I will see you tomorrow when we will go to war with the Ural military Distri district and probably struggle greatly against them. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.